Hello everybody, uh, <laughs> I'm back again, and I just thought I'd do a little, uh, drawing and pen chat. And, anyway, I'm working on this painting for a while now, it's going slowly. I've been busy with lots of, uh, other things. Uh, I have a lot of framing work to do, and for some reason I'm really productive lately too, so that's, that's nice. So, you know, that I have a lot of energy for just working, working, working. And some of it's work I've created for myself, you know, and I'm doing my picture framing, of course, and I'm doing some painting and, uh, I, you know, I'm doing things like I built a shelf for the, for my storage unit and I'm building a desk downstairs and I'm taking a small business course and that's fun. One of the things I'm doing with the course is, uh, as a creator, <laughs> I'm just trying to explore new ideas for using my, uh, my images. And, uh, so I've been exploring, you know, uh, high end printers that are affordable, you know, that I can use at home. And, um, uh, so I found a couple that I'm quite interested in and, I, and I'm enjoying the research, but you know, it takes time. And, uh, I really like the idea of these, uh, echo tanks, uh, Rather than using cartridges, I'm looking for a printer that would take a, an echo tank. And I've come across a couple that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in. And, uh, well, you know, next thing I'm going to do is explore, do, do research on paper. What, what type of paper would work best with that? So that's what I'm up to. And I'm waiting for stuff to dry at the moment. <laughs> Glue and things. So I'm just taking a little time, have a cup of tea, sit down, uh, do a little drawing give you some pen thoughts <laughs> and I just realized that uh, it's essentially my one month anniversary of doing YouTube wow so this is sort of an anniversary special yeah we'll call it that um, so what's been going on yeah it I, I started uh, doing YouTube just because at the time February 7th whenever it was that I, I was, you know, winter on PEI, I always find I need something to inspire me, something new, something to, something to learn, really. I like um, figuring out how things work and watching how YouTube works. It's quite interesting. And as, and as I've done a little bit over the last month, I'm quite interested in watching how the algorithm works and all the, you know, uh, the interface works and figuring out what I enjoy doing, you know, and I'm really enjoying actually, what I'm really enjoying is making some connections with people because every like some comments are really thoughtful and, and kind of, you know, make me think, you know, and, uh, and, and kind of are inspiring. So I really appreciate that. And, you know, most, uh, I'll say it's been a hundred percent positive doing YouTube. So it's fun. And, uh, and I, and I really, you know, as an artist these days, I find that social media, uh, is a very important element to what I do, you know, making connections and just getting my work out there. And I was going to do another website, you know, uh, or a blog, but I find websites and blogs don't work. Years ago, I had a blog and at the time I was doing a very big project, uh, uh, called a long series, which was a thousand, 12, a thousand paintings. And they were 12 by 12 inches. And I used my blog as a way of documenting what I was doing. And so when the project ended, I, I stepped away from the blog. I let it go. And then I was thinking about relaunching a blog for other projects that I wanted to do, but it just, I just couldn't get into it. And I realized that I sit and I, you know, as I'm painting or working, I sometimes have YouTube on in, in the background and I'm, I found that I, you know, <laughs> I'm always watching uh, other YouTubers who are interested in fountain pens or doing things. I learn a lot from those people and I just thought, why not? I'm, I, I, I need, needed something to push me forward and get me going again and and it's and to learn something something new and it's been re, it's been rewarding and i and i appreciate that um 
so I'll take this time to say, well, uh, if you would kindly subscribe, that'd be great. And, you know, leave comments. I am always interested in comments and people giving me information. And that's great, too. Um, I have, um, you know, I have had a couple comments that really kind of interesting. Uh, I'm in a pen club here. Uh, we have a, a wonderful little pen club. And somebody was asking, how do you start a pen club? And even though I came late to, when I joined my pen club, I, it had, had already been in existence for a couple of years. Uh, my understanding, it was just a couple of people getting together once, a, once in a while to talk about pens. And that's how my local pen club started. So if you find yourself in an area and there isn't a pen club and you're interested and you wish you had a pen club, my, sub, my advice would be to find one or two other people that are interested in pens and chat. And that's how a pen club will start. <laughs> you know, you could, uh, you can use zoom to do it or whatever, or if you're able to, you can meet face to face, could be in a coffee shop, could be in a, you know, some space that uh, someone's home or someone's studio or, you know, a cafe or maybe there's a hall you can, you know, rent some space out of just to meet once in a while. And it, the fun thing about them is a lot of it is just people getting together and chatting. You know, we, we try to have a formal structure in some ways where we, we come up with a theme and we talk about that theme. And then quite often after, you know, somebody will do a presentation on a certain pen or urban sketching, calligraphy, pen maintenance. Uh, you know, we'll have an update from, you know, about what's available on the market, what's new to the market, what's exciting, stuff like that. And it's quite pleasurable. Uh, so if you're looking to join a pen club, they're a very open group, I find. Uh, maybe there's one in your community. And if not, maybe you might want to start a pen club, just get somebody together. And um, one of the easiest way to find somebody who's interested in pen is pens are is if you have a, a shop in your community that's selling fountain pens, maybe you could put a notice up and saying, Hey, you want to talk about pens, <laughs> you know, get some names together and then maybe meet once a month. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. And, and, and I use fountain pens all the time as tools, but I also think of it as a hobby. And <laughs> there's all these kind of things that I want to learn how to do better or practice on better. My handwriting. I want to improve my handwriting, you know. Um, when I was a kid, um, way back, um, I remember my teacher prowling up and down the rows of, of desks and where she saw a kid who she thought was doing poor handmanship, pen, poor penmanship or handwriting, not practicing right or holding their pen wrong or something. <laughs> she would slap her yardstick down right beside you and scare the bejesus out of you. You'd jump like crazy. And everybody in the classroom would jump. <laughs> and that's how we learned how to, uh, cursive writing and how to make our numbers and letters and, uh, Anyway, hopefully today it's better. But, you know, my kids haven't actually learned how to do cursive writing in school. And my kids are interested in, in writing. Uh, so that, they, but they're doing it on their own. And, you know, uh, I tend to have developed poor penmanship habits over the years, probably as an act of rebellion against my early education. And yes, I should just sort of spend a little time working on my writing. That's one thing. That's a goal. Okay. Other things that I've <laughs> caught my, my thoughts or caught my attention. I wonder if I prefer, this is going to sound weird. If I prefer pull caps to screw caps, I know, oh boy, contentious, aren't I? Let's start an argument over screw caps versus pull caps. <laughs> this is one of my favorite pens. I use it all the time. 
and you know twisby it it's a great pen but it has a screw cap and it it's not a problem it's fun i like i don't mind screw caps that much right but it's good but man i would love to, if you know twisby comes out with different designs all the time they've come out with the twisby swipe and you know different things and different colors every year and what i love about twisby twisby is the the you know the, the amount of ink it holds. I love the, the filling mechanisms they use, piston fillers, vac fillers. You know, they even have uh, cartridge and converter fillers now. But I would absolutely love if Twisby ever came out with a, a pull cap. Small little thing, but man, that would be nice. Even if it was like an Echo that had a pull cap, that would be cool. I mean, you know, this L Lamy here has a pull cap. And I love the sound of Maybe it's the sound that I like. That little popping noise. You hear it? Isn't that cool? This, the E95S has one of the most satisfying pull caps that you can get. And it doesn't make a lot of sound, but it's about the feel. It makes this nice little sound feel in your hand. You can't really hear it, but it's there. I can feel it when I'm opening it. Right? Whereas with a you know, this Sailor is, is, is a lovely pen and I love it, but you, you gotta, <laughs> it takes a little while to unscrew the cap. Not, not a long time, I know. I'm, I'm being slightly facetious here. It only takes a few turns, but sometimes I go, I, when I'm reaching for it, I'll give it a little pull and I go, ah, don't do that. Right? I love the, I love the sound of a pull cap closing, right? little ASMR. <laughs> Same with this, this Lamy 2000, you know. But yeah, and I find actually, um, I tend to look for pull caps now more, more often. And, you know, unless I really like the brand and the pen is wonderful, or, you know, one of the things I consider is whether it's a pull cap or a screw cap. And some of them, I, you know, my, one of my favorite brands is Twisby and they don't, and it's a, it's a screw cap and it's not not a big deal. It's just a couple turns, but there's something satisfying about certain type of mechanisms that are, you know, just designed to cap a pen. Like a friend of mine has a Visconti, uh, I forget the name, you know, Rembrandt or something like that. And it has the most lovely sensation when you put the cap on. There's almost like a, I think it's a magnetic closure that pulls the, the cap together. And that's, <laughs> that's really kind of fun and it's all these weird little things about fountain pen hobbies that the fountain pen hobby that i really enjoy like these weird you know i would never have thought oh i'm i'm really giving a lot of consideration to cap closures but you know as you use more fountain pens you start thinking like that you know um steel nibs versus gold nibs um I'm of the opinion that you can find some absolutely fantastic steel nibs. I'll stand by that. There's a lot of pens that have gold nibs that are, you kind of go, meh. <laughs> and there's a lot of steel nibs that make me go, meh. That's just how it is. Um, what else am I up to? Oh, I'm looking forward to spring. You know, I'm enjoying the fact that the days are a bit longer. Uh, <laughs> For whatever crazy reason, next week, next weekend, this this coming weekend, the clocks change. I'm of the opinion that we don't need to change clocks anymore. Just leave it like it is right now. I don't need it to be bright at 10 o'clock at, at night. And I don't mind it being bright at 4 in the morning. Because believe it or not, I'm an early riser. And I'm up at 4 sometimes. Usually I'm up at 5. But I, there have been a few, days, few days this week when I'm up at four. I think I like early mornings because, well, it, you know, it's quiet. Everybody's asleep. <laughs> and it's just me and the cats. I, I light the fire, make my coffee. I uh, drag myself to check the news. I, I check the news and, uh, you know, read, read a bit, do a little painting, do some drawing, Maybe look at YouTube for a minute. 
And then I take the dog for a walk when it's a little bit brighter. So, yeah, I don't mind the fact that it's brighter in the summer, you know, but I, I don't think it needs to be bright until 10 o'clock at night. Like in this idea of shifting the clocks back and forth, I, I am so confused every time the clocks change. Like, I don't know whether I'm coming or going and it, <laughs> you know, and I feel tired and I'm draggy and I'm grumpy. And it's like, why do they do this every year? Why can't we go? And that's my complaining. <laughs> uh, what else is going on? Um, yeah, so I'm doing research online about printers and I'm, you know, thinking about making art cards, taking my images and converting them into art cards and maybe stickers, things like that. Fun things, because there's always like craft fairs and stuff like that, pop-up shows that I could take part in. But I tend to be a painter that hasn't really reproduced my work that much. I, I, I should do that. Um, as an artist, you kind of have to have several different revenue streams. Um, and I should, and the whole idea of this research is to develop a new revenue stream there. I'm able to go to a farmer's market or a craft fair. And, you know, if I'm having a show, I have, I'll have cards to be able to sell. So it's just another revenue stream. The funny thing about being a picture framer is sometimes it, I don't have a lot of work to do. And uh, so I'm, I have time on my hands. And then what happens is I start worrying. I go, oh, I'm not very busy. And then for whatever reason, the next thing I know, I have more work than I can possibly handle. So it's like this, you know, and I love that. I actually really work well when I have a lot of work to do or when it seems like, wow, this is, can I handle this? You know, but that's when I really kick into overdrive. I just... So when I'm, when I don't have a lot of work to do frame wise, I find myself sort of draggy and slow and yeah. So it's kind of interesting how my mind works, you know, like I feel inspired when I'm busy. And right now I'm at that point where I have lots of work to do. And I, right now I'm just waiting for paint to dry <laughs> and glue to dry. And I have a limited workspace and I'm waiting for something to finish it downstairs it's taking up a lot of space and when it dries i'll move it out of there and and work on it in another room and stuff like that and then i get onto a then i'll get onto some projects that require me to make some bigger frames stuff like that i'm enjoying a cup of tea i bought a chair that's <laughs> i bought a chair I, you know I, I had, i'm not really showing you where i am but i'm in my studio my workspace up in the attic and it's, it's a lovely space and and uh, I had this old, old, I guess it might have been Wicker Emporium chair from many, many years ago. And, you know, it, it was fine when it was new. Nowadays, when I sit in it, there's like this metal bar across the front that digs into your legs and your, your leg falls asleep as you sit in this chair. And there's a couple other nice chairs in the, up here. There's a nice leather rocking chair that's quite nice. But, uh, and there's a wooden rocking chair that we were using. Um, but I was wandering around the Habitat for Humanity Restore, and I came across this old, old chair. You know, it was really nice. And uh, it kind of reminded me of a chair my grandmother had years and years and years ago. You know, just it's kind of like it's a velour finish and wooden armrests, and it rocks a bit. And it's kind of low, but it's when you sit in it, it's very comfortable. And I would like to say I'm using it, but my cat has taken it and claimed it as her own. I sit in the chair, I'll be reading, and I look out, and there's a cat sitting right in front of me, just giving me the stink eye. <laughs> and it's like, you're kidding me. And as soon as I get up, the cat takes the chair. And then it's like, so we're in this, we're locked in this war of wills over a chair, and she loves the chair. As soon as she gets in it, it's like she's hugging it. She just sort of squeezes down into it it's really funny and yes so i'm in a battle of wills over an, a, an old chair that the cat loves and i like you know but i think the cat loves it more than i do so that's going on yeah. what else am i doing um i'm not too sure what else i'm doing i guess i'm just doing what i do every day 
uh, reading a bit, trying to read more. I used to read voraciously, but I find that as I get older, sometimes as I sit down to read, and I tend to read at night, you know, or when I'm, because I'm running around doing a lot of stuff, I tend to read just before bedtime, and uh, my eyes get tired, and I get tired, so I, I, I'm only good for a chapter a day, <laughs> so I'm slowly reading uh, one of the Philip Pullman books about uh, his dark materials, but the, I think it's the fifth one in the series. Anyway, it's very good. <clears throat> And what else am I doing? I haven't been walking as much, the, even though it's getting a little closer to spring. PEI is going through this place, this cycle of storms over the last two months where we have a storm every weekend and then it freezes and melts. And so walking has been icy. So I, I find I need to get out. I, I, I'm, I really need to walk more, but the, the walking has been terrible. Sidewalks are a mess, and it gets warm, and everything melts, and then it freezes again, and then it's like icy, and you know it's the time of year when people start falling around here and slipping on the ice, and so uh, I know with a bad knee, I <laughs> I tend to look forward to the spring when I can just walk anywhere, and that's coming. It's good this time next month. You know, it'll be it will be into spring. Uh, tends to come late here. It goes from winter to summer sometimes, it feels. And anyway, so this drawing, painting is coming. I'm sort of building up this little checker pattern here. I might do some other work. Uh, as you can see, there's a tree up here, uh, more branches and stuff. It's kind of a wintry, well, maybe it's the fall or spring scene and things like that. So yeah, things have been good. YouTube's a lot of fun. Uh, the kids have been busy. My wife's been busy. People have been trying to be careful with COVID and stuff. And seems like a lot of my friends have caught COVID, but they're all recovered and they're doing well. So that's a good thing. And, you know, I really am looking forward to spring and summer. Uh, oddly enough, my favorite season on PEI would have to be the fall. Because uh, it's the most beautiful time of the year. And the, uh, spring, spring and PEI can be a mixed bag. You don't really get one in some cases. It, you it literally sometimes does go from winter to summer and it's not a gradual thing you know you could be uh, hoping for spring and it just rains and it's cold and miserable and then the next thing you know you're you're complaining about the heat but that's what we do on the island we complain about the weather you need something to complain about right anyway so yeah all in all, it's been pretty good. Um, just me alone with my cats at the moment. The kids are at school. They had the day off yesterday. Or no, they had the day off on Friday for parent teachers. Then it was the weekend. They were an hour late for school today because of the delay, because of the, the, the it, it uh, rained overnight and then it sort of froze. It was pretty icy, so school had an hour delay now everybody's at work or school and it's just me here on my own oh yeah one thing i was going to comment on was I, i'm working on a I'm tossing the painting aside you know i like to as i say i i, I keep a daily journal and a, and this is a, a a midori uh journal that i've been using it's uh the dot matrix which is my favorite <clears throat> i I love using dot matrix, matrix and just a few thoughts on it. It's a lovely book, but one thing I do notice is that um, the paper is very hard. It's, I'll, I'll say hard. It's very um, non-absorbent. Uh, <laughs> I had written in it in the journal using Apache Sunset 
and I actually wonder if it's dry yet. <laughs> it just, it took forever. Like I w wrote with it and I could see the ink just standing on the paper. So I left it open as it dry, it, as the ink dried and it took forever. Um, so lovely notebook, but you know, certain inks are going to take a long time to dry. Um, I really like the Electrum 1917 and this is an, a lovely notebook, but one, one or two little things I've noticed about it. I keep, when I close it, I keep looking for this elastic band that the Electrums have. To, I usually, as soon as I finish writing in it, I take the elastic band and put it over the cover and it stays closed. And it'd be really nice if that hat, hat was on it. The Electrum has a, at the back, uh, sort of like a, an accordion envelope at the back like a, a, a little folder and i'm always as i'm working you know as i'm using the the journal i often put things in there like little you know cards or some or notes or something or uh pictures you know and you know it could be any kind of little keepsake i stick them in the back of the journal and this doesn't have that it it does it it d does have a a plastic cover and i could use that but i you know, there's that little thing there, and and I have I I I've stuck things there, but they fall out. You know, um. But uh, yeah. So that's one thing I I think they could use. Uh, so some kind of envelope at the back where you can put things, and a just a, a, a an elastic band that you could close. You could probably attach one yourself, but that's just what I like. I like the paper a lot in in the electrums. Um, the Endless Dot also has good paper, uh, and I found I didn't have the drying problems that I seem to have with the Midori. Um, but I actually want to try some more Midori products. They have a lot of really interesting design products, and I, uh, I, I want to try that. Another one I want to try is the Hobonichi. Uh, maybe at the end of the year, I'll order a five-year journal from Hobonichi. Um, a friend of mine has one, and I really like it. That you, you, you do your line a day on one side, but on the other side, there's like on the right. I, I believe it's on the left hand side. You, you have the spaces where you do your, your, your lines or, or so for for the day over a five year period. But on the right hand side, there's a, essentially a, a blank area where you can do more extended writing sessions, and that and that appeals to me. Um, my wife has the Electrum 1917 five-year journal, and it's um, it doesn't have uh, the blank page. But what it does have is that you write the date in yourself, which is actually kind of nice. So you can write you write down the year as you start, and you go across, right? So you're going across, and that's actually kind of nice. Whereas I think the Hobonichi, the the, the years are printed on. So um, yeah, and which is fine but i don't it almost makes it impossible to start in the middle of the year whereas i think with the electrum 1917 five-year journal you could start any time of the year you want probably you know if you don't mind that sort of thing and yeah so that's what's going on i'm going to do some more pen uh related reviews i have something actually i have a couple different things coming in the mail so maybe when they arrive i'll do an unboxing i, I like the unboxings they're fun to do. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. So I'm, probably this week I'll get something in the mail. It's always nice to get something in the mail. I love getting stuff in the mail. We don't send each other letters like we used to, do we? Or notes or cards or anything like that. But every now and then it's nice to get something in the mail. I got a few different things that I'll show you when they come. I'll get one of the pen kids to help. Probably pen kid too will help. He, he enjoys that. And what else? Yeah, so... I'll do some more pen reviews, come up with some top fives. Uh, you know, when I do a top five, it's always a personal top five. Keep that in mind. I'm not a great pen reviewer, but I love talking about pens. I don't do all the technical aspects, of course, and I, and I, I don't want to get into that, but that's fun. You know, I like showing a pen and giving it my, my thoughts about it and how I like it or not. And, and I'm, I'm not too picky. I tend to love fountain pens in general. I love vintage fountain pens, of course. I love fixing up old pens, and I like an old pen that has a bit of wear and tear to it. So, yeah, they're not the fanciest pens in the world. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, that was a little thought uh, about 
twist caps and pull caps. So thank you. So anyway, uh, I probably should start doing this more at the front of videos, but really, I really appreciate everybody subscribing. It's been nice to see that actually. And it's kind of, I didn't expect that to, to get as many as I do, even though it's like a couple hundred. That's great. I, I'm delighted with that. And please subscribe. And, you know, you don't have to hit the notification bells. That's okay. Don't do that. But, and I really like uh, people commenting. You know, I love finding out information. What are your thoughts about twist caps versus pull caps? What's your favorite uh, uh, notebook? What don't you like about certain types of notebooks? Which ones that I, what, what do you think I should try a different brand? Do you have a suggestion? Somebody met, mentioned a, an English brand that I haven't, I'm, uh, Oxford, but I don't think I can get it around here. I sh maybe I'll order it online sometime. Oxford. Yeah. They look like an interesting notebook. And well, I guess I will get back to work and thank you very much and like, and subscribe and leave comments. It's a lot of fun talking to people and hearing about everything. And I hope you don't mind me rambling. It's kind of nice to ramble, but anyway, and if you made it through to the end of this video, thank you very much. Have a great day.